famous scene, but they had her get thrown by him, which is part of what happens where she actually needs the fleece in the books. So they, it was so unnecessary that they did it that way. Plus, because she was actually like literally dead, it takes away the magic of what happens later with the tree because yeah. um, like, we know that it can heal her in the books because she is she does have multiple broken ribs and can barely move and then can suddenly like at least escape with them um mm -hmm. but then when it it's laid on the tree for long enough that talia actually comes out like that is just you know nobody could have guessed it now it's kind of like okay we maybe we should have guessed it <laughs> like you know the, the book version of that was like one part we didn't talk about when we did our episode of the book that i thought was funny was or i liked was like almost like the weird banter that percy is having with Thalia when she first wakes up before he fully realizes who she is because nobody else is talking to her and he's like what is wrong with all of you but in this version it's also doesn't feel as special because it already happened and the whole thing of her coming back is like nobody including chiron even thought that it was possible Mm -hmm. for that to happen like one thing I, did, I didn't mention either when we were talking about our last chapters was um the dream that book percy has that will probably be in the show with chronos where chronos is saying that he's in the same place as polyphemus like stuck on the island thinking that he like you know beat them when he really didn't because they basically just like let him believe that he killed them even though they he obviously didn't Mm -hmm. And he's saying, like, you're in the same place that he is. And he's, like, laugh, like openly, like, laughing at him in this dream that obviously, per like, you know, is foreshadowing for, uh, for Thalia coming back. Them thinking, like, them feeling like they, like, stopped their plan when they actually didn't. Mm -hmm. But none of that is happening in this. And so it's just, it seems so silly that they do it like that because the whole thing was that you're supposed to be completely shocked that she's it's even possible for her to even be alive anymore like nobody thought that the they would heal the tree to the point that it would like just like shove her back out because they healed her inside of the tree like itself basically like yeah. nobody thought that that was possible except for probably chronos maybe like obviously but and so in this version of it, I didn't even wait until like, I didn't, I stopped watching the movie before we actually get to the part about Thalia because I'm so tired of this stupid movie that I was just like, I know I already watched the scene with Thalia on YouTube and laughed about how she comes out wearing a leather jacket <laughs> and how funny that is. And so I'm like, I don't need to watch this again. And I know that all of these stupid scenes are just building up to this. And I'm tired of watching this movie ruin everything that I like about this entire property. So I'm just going to turn it off before they even get that far. It was like a scene when Percy was talking to Chiron um, before it even happens. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, so it, it doesn't make sense the way that they have someone go fetch Percy in the movies because in the books, it's like, I I forget how he gets alerted that he's there, but the reason he's he's the only person acting, like you said, was that he's the only person not shocked like well, the way the way it happens in the books makes more sense because um annabeth was the one out there like guarding yeah. the hill when when thalia came back and so grover like runs into percy's cabin and is like getting trying to get him but he is like in such shock about what has happened that he's not actually saying words he's just saying like come he's trying to tell percy to come with him He's saying Annabeth, and so Percy comes with him because he's worried that like something happened to Annabeth or something. And then he gets there and he sees that Annabeth is fine, and he's like, "Oh!" And then he sees that she's standing over somebody, and she's like, "Oh, what?" But like Grover is so shocked by the fact that Thalia is back that he literally like cannot speak and cannot say words about what is going on, but just like one, but just like ran to get Percy because he like. Of course, he would run to go get like his best friend, who's Percy, especially when like all of a sudden there's another like big three kid that just like is suddenly alive. Like, and but that's how it happens in like the book where they run and get him, but they're so shocked that none of them can even tell him what's going on <laughs> because he's the only one who knows how to who, who's like 
able to speak still. But in like this version of it, it's all just so dumb. I'm like, especially how they had his whole stupid storyline about like, nobody at camp likes me and my dad doesn't like me because I can't win games and I don't get to go on big adventures. <laughs> and so it's like, why would they go and get him then? Yeah. Because yeah. Like, because nobody at camp likes you and they would go and run and get Clarice in this like very strange universe over Percy. And so, of course. <laughs> Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Like, the way that they're standing there does not give the impression that they're shocked into silence. It gives the impression that they're waiting. And so it almost, it, it gives the feeling that Percy was alerted to this, and that's why everybody's suddenly, like, rallying and being like, oh, shit, that's Talia. Uh, but, yeah, the books, it, it, I think that'll be a very powerful scene. I can see Walker really, really getting to work on that one. Um, you know, like really being like, what the hell is wrong with you guys? Um, hi, are you okay, girl? Yeah, that's going to be like a really great scene on the show because Walker is Walker and he'll do a great job with yeah. that. And especially because the way that it happens in the books is like when he is, I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but have you ever had like dreams or something about like little parts of your life? that don't really seem to matter. Like, just like, a dream. I'll have like dreams sometimes of like 20 seconds of my life and I'll be like, I don't know what the hell, why I'm dreaming about this. And then like a couple years later, like that tiny little section of like my life will actually happen and I'll be, and I'll get like super huge deja vu and I'll be like, that's weird, but that's interesting. And, but it's almost like that feeling where you're like saying something out loud and you're realizing as you're saying it that you already know the answer. And that's basically what Percy is doing in that scene is he he's asked as he's asking her, like, who are you? He realizes who she is. And since they have like that, you know, the dream with her in it earlier in the book that I'm sure will be in the show, that it makes sense that all of a sudden it like clicks with how everybody is acting and the way that and that she is the girl from his dream. And that must be like Thalia, because who else would that girl, random girl in my dream be who knows that people call me seaweed brain and stuff. <laughs> but it's like a whole thing of him realizing as he's saying it, like, oh, fuck. Like, this is, this is Thalia, isn't it? Because she's next to the tree and she sounds really confused. <laughs> and she's really trying to say that she was dying and, like, won't believe me that she's not dying. Um, but it's a whole, like, big like moment because that of course like changes everything again like at the end of sea of monsters they think that everything is they have things somewhat figured out he's like the prophecy is about me i'll probably i'll like deal with this i'll, I'll do whatever this is i'll figure out a way to handle whatever i'm gonna have to do one day in the future um and he knows about it enough and feels like he can handle it they were able to save camp and so that was like the main thing and then all of a sudden she's there and it's like, oh, fuck, <laughs> like now she's back. I don't know what the prophecy is about Percy anymore or about me. And everything is about to get turned upside down, like again. And <laughs> and also like realizing, you know, like his dream that Kronos did somehow beat them, even if it seemed like they won, um, that he can always somehow outsmart them and that manipulative annoying way that abusive people like that do because they just you just don't think of the things that they would do and so nobody would think that he would bring like a teenage girl back to life just to use her so he could like take over her body and then kill her when he's done with her like yeah. no one else would even see Thalia as an option for that and so there's so much like emotional stuff and it also just like leaves you at the end of that season just being like oh my god like what is about to happen in the next season now that she's back like especially because that whole season talks about how like how i don't know if you and thalia would get along or not mm -hmm. and so they never mention that of course in this movie because why the fuck would they do that and so there's none of that in the movie in the show and the, it will be there it's like a foreshadowing thing of i wonder how this is all going to go like or how badly this could go um, now that she's back, because we don't, we don't really know how what she's gonna feel about Luke and everything either. Yeah. But this movie is just like, well, Luke was eaten twice. Yeah. 
and she probably doesn't give a fuck about him if because Annabeth also doesn't give a shit about him at all. Well, Just we had the Chronos fight, so what prophecy? Like the prophecy's done. Like, why does it even matter that she's even here? Nothing matters anymore. There's no villains to fight. Everyone is gone. The the scariest villain that is like one of the worst villains in all of mythology was killed by like one sword at a theme park. So like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, why are we even here anymore? <laughs>